Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing the Cooter Richardson 20 test using Excel. As always, if you find this video to be helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in Excel fictitious data that I'll be using for this example. I have these five items, and these are all dichotomous variables, zero or one. We'll assume they represent true or false for each item on a survey. And we have 20 participants who took the survey. So we have 20 rows. So each row represents five items that one participant responded to. Now I'm going to be conducting a KR20 test, the Cooter Richardson 20 test, using these five items. And what the KR20 test tells us is how internally consistent the items are how well they hold together. And it gives us a statistic which is the same as Chromebooks Alpha. And we interpret it the same way. And we use the correlation matrix with all the items which I have over here to determine if any items stand out, to see if the items hold together at the same level or if there's an item that stands out and it's not holding together very well with the remaining items. So we'll get to that in a moment. First, I'll calculate the KR20 test. So I'll do that by going up to data on the ribbon here, and then over the top right, data analysis. And I'm gonna select ANOVA two-factor without replication. There's three options available here for ANOVA. ANOVA single factor, two-factor with replication, and without. I'm going with the without replication option. Click OK. And then for the input range, I'm going to select all the values. I'm not going to select the variable names, so the item 1, item 2, and so on. Just the values. Just the zeros and the ones. And then I'm going to select an output range here of cell G9 and click OK. So we have here the ANOVA output. We have the summary of all the rows, the count, sum, average, and the variance for all those rows. And we have those statistics by column as well. However, of interest for calculating the Chromebooks alpha value, the KR20 test, I'm going to be looking at the mean square rows and the mean square error. So 0.54 and 0.14. So to calculate KR20, we are running the same analysis, the reliability analysis, the same one that we use to calculate Chromebooks Alpha. The difference with KR20 is it's used for dichotomous items. So these items here are all true or false. We would consider it a Chromebooks Alpha when we have ordinal interval or ratio. When we have dichotomous items as we have here, it's KR20. So moving down here below the ANOVA table, I'll perform the calculation for Chromebooks Alpha. This will be equal sign 1 minus the mean square error divided by the mean square rows. And we have a result here, Chromebooks Alpha, of 0.73. Now with KR20, anything above 0.7 is considered acceptable and above 0.8 is considered good. So we have a point, we have a value above 0 0.7, 0 0.73, but not one above 0.8. So if we take a look at the items, we want to look at this correlation matrix I've calculated up here and try to see if any of the items stand out as not fitting in too well with the other items. And what we're looking for in this correlation matrix is any value that's less than 0.3. Any correlation that's less than 0.3 is going to stand out as belonging, potentially, belonging to an item that doesn't fit in. So before I review this, go over the calculation I used here. This is the C-O-R-R-E-L function in Excel, correlation. And this is the formula up here in the function bar that I used to calculate these correlations. So taking a look at this we can see that an item has a perfect correlation with itself so I grade those out 
and the items in orange are the same as these items that are white. So let's take a look at these items and see if any of the correlation values stand out. And you can see right away item 3 seems to be an item that stands out. It has a weak positive correlation with item 1 and essentially no correlation with item 2, item 4, and item 5. Those are values that are so close to zero we would just say that there's no correlation. So item 3 doesn't appear to fit in here too well. It doesn't appear to be consistent with the other items. Now when looking at this correlation matrix and evaluating items like this, it's important to recognize that the KR20 test tells us about internal consistency, but it doesn't tell us anything about the construct that we believe our survey is measuring. So in this example, say all five of these items we believe are related to anxiety. We believe the participants are responding to items true or false based on the construct anxiety, that it's going to tell us something about their anxiety level. The KR20 results will not tell us anything about what construct is being measured, only the internal consistency. So with this item 3, because we know that it doesn't appear to be consistent with the other items, we can recalculate the KR20 and see if the Chromebook's alpha value increases. We know it's 0.73 now. We'd like it to be above 0.8. So we can see if that happens. So in order to do that, I'm going to select all of the scores and hit Control C, copy, and just move to the right here a bit. And I'm going to paste those scores starting here in this end column. I'm going to paste just the values. I know the third column represents item 3, so I'm going to delete that row. So now here I just have item 1, item 2, item 4, and item 5. So I've deleted item 3 from this subsequent analysis. So with these data, items 1 and 2 and 4 and 5, I'll go up to the data ribbon and data analysis. Again, ANOVA two-factor without replication. Click OK. Now it's going to hold the same values I used before, so I need to change these. So for input range, for input range, I'm going to select the data that I copy and pasted. And for output range, I'm going to move over to column S and select cell S2 and click OK. And here we have all the same statistics that we had before, except item 3 is not included, so we have we only have these four columns here instead of five. And again, we have this ANOVA table. We're interested in the mean square error, the mean square rows, just as we were before. I'm going to use the same formula here. This is going to be 1 minus mean square error divided by mean square row. And now with item 3 deleted, we have a Chromebook's alpha of 0.85. So by deleting item 3, we move from an acceptable level of internal consistency to a good level of internal consistency. I hope you found this video on calculating the KR20 test in Excel to be useful. Thanks for watching.